Happy Friday. I have uh, really a fascinating devotion to share with you today. Now, if you have a Bible handy, if you're at home and you know where a Bible is or wherever you might be, and if you can have access to a Bible, please hit pause and go get your Bible because I think you'll find this fascinating too. And it's neat to flip through your own Bible and see this for yourself. But our devotion came to, comes to us today from my dad. My dad will send me some really neat uh, Christian and spiritual things from time to time. And he sent this to me a couple weeks ago. And I was just fascinated by this because I'd never seen this or heard this lesson before. And I'm, maybe you haven't as well. And I just wanted to share it with you. But if you've got your Bibles... Uh, we're going to do a little bit of a trivia game today, so we're going to test your biblical knowledge, and then I think there's a really neat spiritual lesson to be learned as well. But question number one, what is the very shortest chapter in all of the Bible? What takes up the smallest space in terms of words and letters? Well, it is Psalm 117. So if you open your Bibles along with me, You'll discover that Psalm 117 only takes up two verses. That's it. The entire chapter is only two verses long. Now, second question for the day. What is the longest chapter in all the Bible? What has the most verses? What takes up the most space? Well, believe it or not, it's not very far away. The longest chapter in all of the Bible, drum roll please, is Psalm 119, just two chapters away. Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in all the Bible. It takes up 176 verses. And if we would just stop right there, I'd find that fascinating that the shortest and the longest are so close in the Bible together. Psalm 117 and Psalm 119, um, they, they make up the same page in many Bibles. Now, fascinating part of that though doesn't end there someone and i'm not sure who discovered this because the um the illustration that my dad sent me didn't have a name with it didn't have a source behind it but someone actually counted the number of chapters that come before psalm 117 so the the number of chapters found in the bible coming before psalm 117 totals 500 and 94. So if you just start counting chapters and you go all the way back to Genesis 1, you'll discover that there are 594 chapters before the shortest chapter in the Bible. Even more fascinating, if you go to the longest chapter in the Bible, Psalm 119, and you count the chapters one by one until you get to the end of the Bible, do you want to guess how many chapters in length that is? You've got it. It is 594 as well. So the shortest chapter and the longest chapter in the Bible. And if you count either going to the front of the Bible or the end of the Bible, they both come up with 594 chapters. Now you might say, well, that's a coincidence and a really cool coincidence, but it doesn't stop there. Now, get out a, a pencil and a paper. If you add up 594 plus 594, don't use a calculator, use a, a paper and a, a pencil and a, a piece of paper, you get 1,188. 594 plus 594 equals 1,188, which gives us the, the exact center of all of God's Word. Now, Psalm 118, verse 8, 1188, Psalm 118, verse 8, the very middle of all of God's Word. If you've got your Bible, look at it with me because I find this absolutely fascinating. The center, the heart, the core of the Bible has these words. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in mortals. Now I'll read that one more time because I love that. The very center of God's word, boy, those are powerful words, aren't they? How we are to orient our life, how we are supposed to arrange our life. And the very, very heart, the very, very center of the, 
the, the Bible, it says, it is better to take refuge in the Lord. You know, some Bibles will describe this as better to take shelter in the Lord. It is better to put our confidence in the Lord than it is to put confidence in mortals, than it is to trust fellow human beings, than it is to trust all the different things that we human beings can, can put our trust and our hopes in. And those are great words. And I just find that fascinating. You know, the shortest and the longest being so close together, then you add up the chapters before and after, and you, you get the heart of God's word. Psalm, Psalm 118, verse 8. Now, I know this devotion is a little bit shorter today, but I hope you find that fascinating. And um, I just think that's neat. The, the heart of God's word. Put your trust in God. Put your hopes in God that God has this. And we're still in the middle of these trying days, but every day if you wake up and you remind yourself that, if you go to that, the very heart of the Bible um, reminds us that God is in control, that he has this. Now tomorrow we'll have another devotion, and I want to invite and encourage you to make Sunday a priority, though, in your, in your life. So in two days, Sunday morning, if you're a church-going person, it's important that we keep up that holy day, that it's important that we come together and we worship God. And I know churches throughout the country, we're not worshiping in our church buildings, but there are all kinds of different ways and, and modes that you can worship online or on the radio or on your TV or whatever it might be. And I invite you to, to worship along with me. I will worship at 11 a.m. this Sunday. You can find us at covenantgrafton.com. If you don't have a place to worship, uh, we'll lift up our hearts. We'll read some of God's word. Um, but uh, thank you for stopping in to hearing this devotion. I hope you find it fascinating. I hope you can share this message with somebody else as well. Um, but may God bless you. May you continue to um, be the arms and the hands and the compassion that, that this world needs and um, that loving uh, Christian and that loving soul that God has made you to be. So have a, a wonderful and a blessed day, and I hope to see you again tomorrow. God bless.